This episode of the Totally Rad Show is brought to you by GoDaddy. Coming up on today's episode, we take a look at the comic Irredeemable. Totally Rad Show. We're talking about comic books today, and we've got one called Irredeemable. Now, this is a comic from Mark Wade and Boom Studios. Mark Wade, of course, one of the most prolific, well-known comic book creators. He's a guy that's worked on all the big characters for a long, long time. He's responsible for one of the pinnacle works of comics called Kingdom Come. Uh, and Irredeemable is an interesting idea in that it's a classic superhero I, uh, comic but done in a very postmodern way. You have basically a guy, the Plutonian, who is Superman in a very classic kind of DC analog universe. And he up and decides one day, as the most powerful man in existence, that Earth kind of sucks and he's pissed off. And so he turns evil. So it's a what if story in a lot of ways of what would happen if Superman became a super villain. And the story revolves around analogs to basically the Justice League trying to take down the Plutonian. Interesting stuff. Uh, a lot of people who've read my blog, jeffcanada.com, know that I'm a big fan of this comic. I'm curious what Alex thinks. Uh, I loved it. I thought it was great. Um... It's, it's definitely very gritty uh, at times. Um, I mean, it, it kind of gets you that feel that you have with the sort of capes and cowls stuff, which of course I love. Yep. Um, but then also gets into that, delves into that sort of like, you know, Watchmen-esque kind of, you know, why would I want to help these people when all they want is more help from me kind of a thing. Mm -hmm. um, and there's some horrific stuff that this guy does. You know what I mean? Like oh, yeah. serious like global genocidal crazy stuff which is this is going to sound really weird but in a way it's sort of a little satisfying because you've always felt like god dang i mean superman is so great but boy if he turned his if he just didn't want to do that he could really mess some stuff up so then to see you know like with the diamonds and say i mean it's like you could really do some dam. I mean, serious, yeah. like million scale damage. Oh yeah, and he uh, does. I mean, that's one of the cool things about this book is that he doesn't pull any punches no. in committing to the concept. It's like, yes. this is, he's gone evil. Not yeah. just like temporarily no. bad. No, no. Yeah. evil. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He, didn't, he didn't lie on his taxes one year. <laughs> yeah. And go, well, superhero wasn't so bad that year. Millions of like, deaths, wiped eh. cities off the face of the planet. And some of the things, there were some really Rapes people. profound, yeah, and there's, but there's some really profound sentiments in this as well. Yes. You know what I mean? I like, uh, there, are li there are lines that landed like a ton of bricks on me. Um, a lot of it's sort of about fame. It's about yeah. um, expectations that pe that strangers have. Yeah. It's about um, you know uh, the responsibility of keeping up a public persona. It's about like nobody understands me. Sure. It, it's, and you sort of relate to this evil, evil guy in yeah. a lot of ways. And there are some really. I mean, there are some. There's some funny scenes in this. Uh, you know. The, the thing with the faces off, they're like, oh, this is this is less unsettling. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> there's some really funny stuff and moments that are shocking and funny. You know, when he's sitting there with the coffee cup and that one scene, and everybody's like, huh, okay. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, genuinely exciting stuff. So I I think it's a, a great comic. Yeah, it's. Uh, I should also mention we read the first two trades. There are four that are oh, currently cool. available, and it's an ongoing uh, series. So the more will more will be forthcoming. Dan, I know you told me you didn't like this book, and then all of a sudden it was like, oh, I thought it was something else. Yeah. <laughs> I thought it was The Mighty. Uh, uh, they're very similar premises, and the covers were similar, and I was like, oh, yeah, no, I read... And then I realized, whoa, I've never read the... Right, right away, it started, and I was like, whoa, this is not... Uh, the Mighty I did not like, FYI. Um, uh, irredeemable... Bonus <laughs> review! Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, side note, as the one of the sole um, fans of the Ultraverse... 
Ah. Uh, Mark Wade did a wonderful com- rune was yeah. his yeah thing. This um, is a concept he's dealt with a lot of times as well. He's he's kind of circled this idea for a while, and I think that he's finally this is his he owns this concept, and he's the editor in chief of Boom. So I think he's the editor in chief, but he's in, oh, up there. I didn't know that. Yeah. Um, so it's clearly you know, something that's near and dear to his heart. I'm not so. that opinionated. This is a hard one to, to review. I'm not that opinionated on, on Irredeemable. I oh. thought I, I thought it was I thought it was all right. Um, definitely, the premise is very compelling, and the opening pages are 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 extremely um, arresting. And the story is is cool, um, but I, everything you guys said does not resonate with me. My w- w- wasn't my experience of it. I didn't nothing really prof- landed on me in any profound way. In fact, everything you're describing and the experience of reading it felt very similar to the first story of um, in Astro City. Uh, of course, not right. about a supervillain, but says very similar things about the, the, the demands on a superhero. Yeah. And, uh, well, obviously, it. it's it's a concept that it, yeah, is, it's, it's not either. new. Sure. Yeah, but sure. I think this take this particular well, yeah, take is it makes it a little bit more visceral. Definitely. Um, yeah. But I less but emo when you're destroying millions it just of people. Didn't, yeah. It just didn't do much for me, and I didn't I didn't connect with the Justice League analogs, and I I, I didn't I didn't find them to be like I didn't think they were that very creative. Char- like the the types weren't very cool. Hmm. I I kind of felt similar to Watchmen, but Watchmen's got a million other things happening in it. Um, and I I really the art is okay. The layout, the page layouts are very pedestrian to me. They're very hmm. like they're just squares on a page. There's no, there was not no, nothing interesting. Or I wasn't really ushered through a story through frame. It would just felt like, and it wasn't spe- um, especially creative. It was just kind of old school, which mm. it, it's not a fault. I just wasn't, you know, bowled over. Yeah, I think if I had a criticism, I, I would be, agree with you about the art to a certain extent. Um, I, this was on my top ten list of things for 2010 because I didn't read it before 2010, uh, even though it's been going longer than that. But it's it's my favorite comic of the year uh, that I experienced, and. It, the third trade, which which I don't think you guys read, um, dips a little bit for me, but I, I love the manner in which this story is told. It, it You do get into that psychological examination of what this must be like to be Superman, and there's like descriptions of his superpowers in a way that I've never quite heard Superman's hmm. superpowers described before. Yeah. Like the the... Point at like what people do, like, like his family like won't talk because they know he can superhear them anywhere on the planet at any yeah. time, and he's just so much more powerful than everybody. And I love the fact that there's this Batman analog that you never even see because he was the first person that Superman killed, yeah. or Plutonian, excuse me, killed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's like, he just we killed him right away. Nope, no, no questions asked. Like yeah. he's not vaporized, which is I just I love, I love the. Depths to which Wade goes uh, in, in this in this book, and he also is publishing a um, the flip side. Um, it's called uh, Incorruptible, which is the bad guy who goes good. Uh, hmm. Isn't so, there a third one as well? There might be. I don't, I'm not aware. There's one I that doesn't it. change. <laughs> no, I don't know. It's, it's, it's it good a, and bad. bad. <laughs> yeah, guy. Yeah. Yeah. Incorruptible and like unchangeable. Yeah, um, or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Unaffected. One. Yeah. Uh, anyway, yeah. it's it's a really cool comic. I recommend it to a lot of people. I'm I'm, I'm mm-hmm. bummed that you uh, that you didn't like it more than you did, but you didn't dislike. I don't dislike. It's not no, the mighty. No, it was. Yeah. I did not. No, I definitely was pretty bummed at the mighty. But uh, this was this was uh, good. It's good. Yeah. Listen to them because they they definitely more passionately about it. But if you <laughs> feel very unop- if you're not very, opinionated guy, if you feel very complacent or inconchangeable, whatever the third book is, <laughs> inconchangeable. You feel like me. I want to read <laughs> inconchangeable. <laughs> So be sure to stick around for this day in red history, but we do want to thank our sponsors. GoDaddy.com is your place to purchase domain names and get hostings for your website. Uh, They have 99.9% uptime, 24-7 support. Uh, I mean, there's an iPhone app, which is great for buying domains on the go. If you come up, you you know, you're on the GoDaddy. You're on the GoDaddy, and you're sitting there, and you're like, oh, man, that would be a great domain name. I wonder if it's taken. Uh, Mm -hmm. Nope, got it. We've used that many many a lunch. What about about sweet codes? There are some sweet, sweet codes for your sweet, sweet nodes. Uh, Use the coupon code TRS8 when you check out and get 10% off your entire order. Also, make sure to go to revision3.com slash GoDaddy for all of the GoDaddy codes. Uh, cool, peeps. We yeah. will see you uh, tomorrow. Sounds good. On the flip side, I think, is where it is. That is the flip side. That's where it is.
Don't miss tomorrow when we review the new movie, The Company Men. Today is January 19th, and on this day in rad history in 1993, production began on a little film you may have heard of called Toy Story. Ah. And a little company you may have heard of called Pixar, which was then back, uh, was then back, or back then, a part of uh, ILM. Uh, Toy Story, of course, huge deal when it came out. I don't know if you oh, guys yeah. remember, but it was like, oh, they're gonna make CG animation oh, yeah. now? Yeah. And then, of course, like a few years later, it was the PlayStation 2's coming out, and it's gonna have Toy, Toy Story, Story graphics. graphics. Yeah. No, uh, uh, Pixar started out at working for ILM on Young Sherlock Holmes. But then was bought by Steve Jobs. Right. Wow. Ah, no, the, that's not how it before, went. Before uh, Toy Story happened. You didn't buy them. Or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Zach Grimm. He may have bought them, but, I, but yeah. he wasn't an island then.